VMs are in debt. There are still a lot of VMs. There are still a lot of bare metal in this world. If you don't believe me, just go take a look at the thousands of data centers that still exist and the millions and millions of dollars that organizations are paying to get these data centers up and running properly. So if we're gonna be thinking about Kubernetes as our underlying platform of choice, we have to think about how we can run virtual machines on Kubernetes. And luckily there's an object or a resource that we can deploy via Kubernetes with Kubevert. And if you haven't heard of Kubevert, it's simply just a way to run actual virtual machines, not applications and containers or pods, like actual virtual machine resources on Kubernetes. And we're gonna see how to deploy a Windows server because we see a lot of Linux in the Kubernetes and containerization space. So I wanna showcase it from a Windows perspective here because yeah, you still may have workloads that are running on Windows. Uh, one thing that will actually, two things that come to mind, Active Directory and print servers. So if you're in an office, you probably have those two things. And if you wanna get Kubernetes to be your underlying platform of choice, you're gonna to have to be able to run some Windows boxes. In a previous video that I did, we set up Kubevert, we got it installed, we got the custom resource installed and the controller, we uploaded an ISO, all that stuff. So if you don't know how to do that already, take a look at this video up here. It'll help you out just to get started and get your Kubernetes environment configured, okay? So what I wanna start with is the hard drive for the Windows server and the Windows server itself, and then we'll see the deployment. So this is going to be the persistent volume claim or the persistent volume that we're going to be utilizing for the hard drive. Notice here, I'm saying 100 GI, I'm utilizing the Azure File Premium Storage class. And like I said, this is going to be what's used for the hard drive. This is for all the persistent storage. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual virtual machine configuration. So Kubevert does not put the virtual machine in a container or a pod or anything like that. It is literally a virtual machine object. Just like we have deployment objects and pod objects and service objects, this is a virtual machine object. It's incorporated from the Kubevert operator, so the Kubernetes API gets extended for Kubevert to be able to deploy its virtual machine resources inside of Kubernetes. Okay, so we scroll down here and it looks like a pretty, you know, generic Kubernetes manifest. The biggest thing that we're going to want to ensure that we know about is number one, the CPU and the boot order and actually just the overall machine pieces. So we're going to have to specify how much CPU, virtual CPUs we want. The disk order, very, very important. So notice here how I have boot order one for the ISO and boot order two for the hard disk okay the reason why we're doing that is because if we don't set it up in this boot order fashion it'll just keep looping through the installation okay and funny enough if you're deploying a linux box it's it's the opposite so the iso is boot order two and the hard drive is boot order one now we can also specify the machine type here the memory hyper-v configurations we actually don't need this bootloader here and then we just specify our volume. So where the ISO is, you know, if you uploaded an ISO to let's say ISO HD, if that was the persistent volume claim name, you would specify it here. And then when HD for the persistent volume claim we just created here for the hard drive, okay? And that's about it. It looks like, you know, other than that, it's a general Kubernetes manifest specifying the kind and spec and the labels and all that good stuff. Again, this is just for a virtual machine. So let's go ahead and CD into the correct location here. And I'll run kubectl create minus F win 2022.yaml, all right? So now if I run kubectl get VM, we can do a watch on this resource and wait for it to be completed. All right, now it's pretty quick. So now what we're going to do is connect to the virtual machine. So I'm gonna open up another terminal here. I'm gonna to go to my downloads because that's where my virtual CTL is. And I'm gonna paste this command here. So I'm specifying virtual CTL. Uh, I think this is actually not going to be the right version here. Let me go ahead and update this. All right, so it should actually be this one. This is one that I have downloaded 
you may have a different version downloaded, just make sure you know which one. Or if you put it on your path already, you're just running Vert CTL anyway, so it doesn't matter. VNC and the name of our virtual machine. Now, of course, you will need a VNC player. You can download one for free. And here's our general setup and configuration for our virtual machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next. Notice here the, uh, the mouse piece is a little bit odd here. That's okay though. All right, I'll go ahead and click the install now button. All right, we'll choose, let's see, we'll go to the, uh, the desktop experience here. We'll click next, acknowledge the terms of use, do a custom install. All right, and you should see the persistent volume pop up here. If you don't, click on load driver, click cancel, and you should see a list of drivers here, okay? If you see a list of drivers, just install all of them. All righty. And now we're gonna go ahead and wait for our operating system to finish installation. All right, and then once the installation is complete, you'll see that screen come back up and we should now be booting into Windows. We can see Windows is getting ready here and installation is complete. So we can put in our password here. This is gonna be the local administrator account to sign in. And let's see to log in. Password. And we are officially in. Server manager starting. I can go ahead and click the start button here and maybe uh, open up some PowerShell. And I can go ahead and type in some commands here. 